Hello and welcome to a week 12 edition of the Kama Sutra Show. It is called the Kama Sutra Show because we will be going position by position through every viable option on Sunday's main slate. Before we get to all that, I want to give a very, very, very happy Thanksgiving from everyone here at ETR to you and to your families. Want to give a big thank you to all of our subscribers. Of course, we know you are subscribers because this show is indeed subscriber only. We are back on our normal routine of content and shows following the whole Black Friday special thing. We really do appreciate all of you. We are busting our ass to provide value for you. Hope that you enjoy. If anyone here is new, be sure to connect your subscriber podcast feed. You will get this show on audio. You'll get Drew and Mike's show audio. You'll get Evan's matchups read to you by a beautiful man named Jake. If you would like that, if you don't feel like reading, you can find the instructions to get all that under the shows tab. That's also where you'll find the team by team pods that are premium. Okay. How was your guys Thanksgiving? Evan and Andrew Wiggins. Uh, I don't know what you do in Hippieville. Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? I don't know what you guys do up there. Yeah, man. Uh, good Thanksgiving. In-laws have been here helping out with the baby. So that's been fantastic. Uh, you know, giving me a little bit of time to go out and play disc golf and do other hippie things. So yeah, <laughs> living the dream, man. Imagine having two kids under two years old and playing disc golf while your in-laws take care of the kids. Okay. <laughs> Silva, what's going on? Still in the hotel. How are you, buddy? Yeah. What's up? I think this is, uh, yeah, this is my last night, uh, in the hotel. Um, uh, but I had an awesome Thanksgiving, you know, got to see, uh, you know, my, my stepdad and my, my mom and, uh, uh my, my brother. And, uh, it, it was, it was a blast. This is, this is a crazy ass slate though, man. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, it almost feels like a week 17 or a preseason slate with all the injuries, all the COVID stuff. Um, you know, and I, I know you love this stuff, Adam, because yeah. it allows you to really dig deep. And uh, so it's, it's going to be a really interesting show, I think. Yeah, we have not had a slate like this where there's so much value in a while. And we've been, it's been really tight and we've been really trying to squeeze guys in. We've been taking on really thin plays. And on this one, you know, they might be thin, but at least you can be excited about some of them. We'll get to guys like that as we go along here. But yeah, like if you haven't thought about the week 12 main slate until now, well, that's actually a good thing because we ran into a ton of late week Injury news, Todd Gurley is out. Larry Fitzgerald is out. John Brown, DJ Chark, Chris Conley, Savan Ahmed, Irv Smith are out. Adam Thielen not expected to play. Julio and Hayden Hurst are questionable. So are Miles Gaskin. So is Kalen Balaj. So we're going to get to all of that. But this is a good week to start fresh now, man. Like I actually fell a little bit behind with all the Thanksgiving stuff. And um, being able to kind of start fresh after we have all this information, I think is better than starting before. So let's get into it at the quarterback position. Quarterback position is a spot where we actually don't have a lot of injuries. And yeah, we can talk about the Tua thing in a little bit. Tua is listed questionable. There's some doubt whether he'll play. I think he will. There's reasons to think that he might not, but I actually want to start at the top because you can make a pretty good case for any of Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray as the best play on this slate. My lean on DraftKings specifically where the 300 yard bonus comes into play is towards Patrick Mahomes. So likely to get that 300 yard bonus, he's 8K. He saves you 200 off of Kyler. He's 400 more than Josh Allen. I think people are going to say, wait a minute, Adam, you and Evan have been talking about how the Bucs have one of the best defense in the league. The Bucs uh, are, have, can rush the passer. The Bucs have excellent defensive backs. I think they lost one of them to injury this week. Still, I don't worry about matchups too much when it comes to Patrick Mahomes. And if you think Tom Brady can succeed against the Chiefs defense, well, we could have a real shootout on our hands. So, Evan, how would you analyze the Patrick Mahomes spot and the top of the quarterback position? No, I, I completely agree, and I, I'm glad that you uh, brought that up first because I think that this is an absolute smash spot for uh, the Kansas City offense or the, the passing game. Um, you know, we saw, like, uh, the Rams, the way that they attacked uh, the Buccaneers last week was just, you know, tons and tons of pass attempts and, um, you know, avo just essentially, like, avoiding that studly run defense uh, of Tampa Bay. The, the Bucs do have a good defense. I mean, they have a lot of talented players, but I think that uh, the teams going up against them have, have sort of figured them out a little bit. And the way that you attack them is just through the air, you know, with, and, and I think that, you know, they're going to struggle to, to cover Travis Kelsey. They're going to be without Jamel Dean, which you kind of uh, uh, alluded to there. Jamel Dean is a, you know, a rock solid, big athletic cornerback. Uh, he's out with a concussion. Um, I think that Tyree Hill, you know, as, as like a smaller guy who can run by like any, uh, any like any NFL secondary, I think he's going to have openings against Tampa Bay. Um, we should get uh, a lot of Miko Hardman. I know that Miko Hardman 
uh, played very little uh, in the, the Chiefs last game, but no Byron Pringle. I think that that's that's good. I, I think that their um, their their primary three receiver set is going to be Tyreek Hill, Miko Hardman, and um, uh, Sammy Watkins coming back. So um, I don't know. I, I I think that that game is like a a, a massive shootout, and um, I'm with you on Patrick Mahomes. Sorry, amateur mistake muted. Uh, you think that uh, uh, Miko is going to play ahead of Demarcus Robinson in this game? Well, I mean, I don't think it's like a, a sure thing, but I think that we will definitely see him play a lot more than yeah. he did uh, in uh, the the previous Chiefs game um, uh, with, with no Byron Pringle. Yeah, so uh, for sure, big upgrade for Mahomes going away from Pringle and Robinson and going more towards Sammy Watkins and uh Miko Hardman Wiggins I know this is a bit spite site specific I think that Mahomes is best on DraftKings but maybe not and on FanDuel I think you can make a case for somebody else you can make a case for Kyler you can make a case for Josh Allen as the best too Josh Allen splits without John Brown are a little bit rough which made me lean a little bit more towards Mahomes I still think that's really marginal especially because I think Gabe Davis can play a lot we'll get to him in a second what do you think about the top of the quarterback pool and how it goes by site yeah, first off, just at a high level, we've had a lot of slates where we've said, hey, you know, don't necessarily love this for cash, but I like it for GPP. This one I think is actually the opposite. I'm I'm not seeing a lot of angles I like for GPP, but cash, I think it's pretty good. And to me, Mahomes is the clear cut number one quarterback on both sides. I'm not gonna overthink it. I mean, he's four hundred dollars more than Josh Allen on both sides, but I mean, this is Mahomes and he's really been starting to cook, and we just talked through a lot of reasons to like him. So he, he's my guy in cash games. Okay, if you look at Leone's pass rate over expectation, one thing you can see over the last four or five weeks is the Chiefs have gone absolutely nuclear. They're not even trying to run the ball. I mean, they're just throwing on ball on every single play, and that makes me like, and plus what Evan talked about, how you can attack the Bucks defense. So I think we can see a lot for that. Still, I don't want to say bad things about Josh Allen and Kyler Mahomes and Kyler Murray in their respective spots. Josh Allen gets a home game against the Chargers defense, which has talent, has been struggling mightily. Evan, how bad do you think the John Brown injury hurts the projection for Josh Allen in this game? It's a good question because we've talked so much about the correlation between John Brown being at hundred percent and how much uh, better the bills passing attack is when he's at hundred uh, percent. But I think that at least to some extent it is offset by the chargers uh, losses of Melvin Ingram, their, their number two pass rusher, uh, uh, Casey Hayward, their number one outside cornerback. Uh, and uh, Ushena Nuosu, uh, who's their number three edge pass rusher. Um, so they are significantly shorthanded. Uh, they are traveling, you know, to Buffalo at, at, at 1 p.m., uh, you know, Eastern time. Um, I, I, I like this game to shoot out, you know, even without John Brown. I, 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 I was so, you know, coming off the bye, I was so optimistic that John Brown would be ready to roll but it looks like he might have a high ankle sprain, which, you know, we, we hate. It's the, like the worst injury that you can have for a skill position player. Right. And also Kyler Murray, you could argue gets an upgrade with down, get rid of Larry Fitzgerald, put in Andy Isabella still, you know, he probably has the worst potential game flow when the Patriots are playing well. Uh, they can really suck the life out of the other team. I'm not saying the Patriots are going to play well here, but at least they can. And so Kyler scares me a little bit with Gilmore on DeAndre Hopkins, which I'm not worried about really, but it's just when these guys are so close, Josh Allen, Mahomes, and Kyler, I'm looking at nitpicking little things. What do you think about the other guys, Wiggins, Kyler, and Josh Allen? Because if everybody's going to, I mean, you know, one of these guys, I'm, we're going to work on the ownership projections after the show, but one of these guys is going to end up being left out a little bit, I think. Yeah. One, I mean, we are nitpicking because they're all good plays, but I do think the John Brown thing is worth something. And Kyler Murray's more expensive than Mahomes on both sites, and he's a little bit banged up. I think he's probably fine, but it's just enough to give me a little bit of pause. And I think Belichick, you know, historically he's done a pretty good job on Nuke, and I think he probably will here too. So, you know, that's just his main, you know, a, a slight downgrade to his main weapon. And he's gotten so much done on the ground, he could easily do it again. But, man, I just... I'm just a big Mahomes guy, and when, and he's just been playing so well lately. I just I, I just don't think you need to overthink it in cash. Now, when it comes to tournaments, right now, I mean, Josh Allen's being projected as the most owned. I think at the higher stakes, people are going to play Mahomes a lot, so I don't think you're getting anything by anyone there. Kyler probably comes in at the lowest ownership of the bunch, so he might be the best yeah. tournament play. Okay. I, I have a question. Why are we not considering Justin Herbert to yeah. be uh, among the first-tier quarterbacks? Yeah. 
It's a good question. And by the way, I just want to touch on what uh, Wiggins said real quick. Uh, it's a throwing shoulder injury for Kyler Murray. I think he's fine. But yeah, on Justin Herbert, Justin Herbert is 7,200. So he's only 400 less than Josh Allen now on DraftKings. I, I love Justin Herbert. He's so aggressive. I have no problem whatsoever with Justin Herbert. He's just getting a little bit close in price to the elite tier. Evan, it sounds like you think he is in the elite tier. Yeah, I, I think that he he belongs there. Um, he's been a high floor, high upside uh, producer ever since he entered the lineup. Um, over the Chargers' last seven games, uh, just in terms of like total points scored by the Chargers plus their opponent, they're they're averaging sixty point four points per game. Uh, which I mean, they're just you know these are shootout scenarios. And again, with char- the Chargers missing. Uh, Melvin Ingram and Casey Hayward and Uchenna Nwosu, I think that could actually work in the favor of Justin Herbert. Uh, the Bills' defense has not been what we expected uh, to, to begin the season. Over the course of the year, they've they uh, they've had like really two good games, and they were both against Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, and otherwise, like teams have been scoring on them. So uh, I I absolutely love that game. I know that Leone was like, "Why is this total so low?" Yeah. You know, and I, I completely agree. The the one, you know, I, I you, you can't make uh, DK Sportsbook bets on, uh, in Missouri. Uh, but the 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 one so the one game that I did get a bet in on uh, before I left Illinois for Missouri was uh, Bill's Chargers at uh, over uh, 53 and a half. I don't I don't know what it's up to now, yeah. but that's what it's about. That's where it is now. And we're not okay. quite sure. Actually, we, you know, we, we run some stuff to think about Leone things about how many total touchdowns each team is going to score. And we're actually over projecting the Chargers touchdowns relative to their team total right now. So we do think the Chargers are going to play a little bit better than the market thinks here. Yeah. I think Herbert is okay. I think he's just a little bit too close in price to me to Josh Allen Wiggins. What do you think about Herbert? And then I want to talk about the rest of the mid range. Yeah. I think it's just a pricing mostly. And and the total gives me a little bit of pause. It's a 24 team total for them. It just seems I don't know, man, for a game that we think is going to shoot out and we, you know, they've been scoring really at ease. Uh, it just gives me a little bit of a pause. It's cross country. And then the other thing I'd note is that Thorne did write them up as a mismatch, the Bills defensive line versus the Chargers O-line. That's his fourth, um, fourth ranking mismatch. So, you know, um, you, you can poke some holes there, but uh, maybe, I don't know. I mean, we have them owned kind of in that same range as, as the studs, but I could see him coming in at low. Well, but then again, everyone's going to want to stack this game. So yeah. I, I actually retract that. I actually, the, the ownership projections right now are real rough. I, I, I'm going to go after and do a whole uh, sweep basically from scratch. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I agree with you. He'll come in a little bit less. I do want to note Justin Herbert is popping in the zip model. This is a new model that uh, me and the team are actually working on the R and D team. And so in the zip model right now, uh, Justin Herbert is popping big time. Okay. In the mid range, Taysom Hill is 6,200. We saw kind of the the ceiling for Taysom Hill where he actually looked pretty good as a thrower. Actually had a bomb to Manny Sanders called back uh, by penalty, but still like, I mean, I know the box score is really good. He did not look overly comfortable and they tried to make him play the Drew Brees It was somewhat fortunate that he scrambled for two touchdowns. They were not designed runs. He scrambled for two touchdowns. So he's 6,200. I think he provides a nice floor thanks to rushing. But man, when you go home against Atlanta, which is like the best possible matchup. Now you have to go outside. And I know Denver is not great. I'm not worried about Denver, but outside to Denver, which is anybody's better than the Broncos. I'm a little bit worried about Taysom Hill as a thrower here. And if they're going to try to make him be Drew Brees, I could see struggles still. I still think Taysom Hill at these mid-range prices is acceptable for the rushing equity you're going to get. What do you think about, what do you think about Taysom last week? Evan? We didn't get to do the team by team. What do you think about Taysom mm-hmm. last week? And uh, what do you think about him here against Denver? No, I agree. I think that he played, you know, at his peak performance, you know, and um, he's he's a dual threat, obviously. Uh, and the Broncos have, I mean, quarterbacks have been scoring points against the Broncos, you know, on, on a pretty consistent basis. Not necessarily like ceiling weeks, but, you know, high floor performances every single week uh, for quarterbacks facing Denver. At the same time, um, I think uh, like my biggest concern is with the Broncos that uh, Vic Fangio is one of the best defensive schemers in the NFL. Um, you know, we've now got a, a full game of tape on Taysom Hill uh, as a quarterback. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's like regression is very, very likely for Taysom Hill. He's not going to score two rushing touchdowns again. Like, you know, that would be like, you know, the safest bet on the board if we could bet on that. Um, 
And, you know, like, is, is he going to have a, another big pat, you know, a, a big passing day? I, I, I don't know. I, I think he's a fade this week.